Reports from Belarus say that a prominent opposition leader has been abducted by unidentified people in the capital, Minsk. The website tut.bi BY, excuse me, says that Maria Koliniskova was pushed into a minivan by men in black clothing and driven away. She's seen here at a massive protest rally held on Sunday. More than 600 people were arrested in the demonstration. Protesters have turned out for the past four weeks, calling on longtime authoritarian leader Alexander Lukashenko to step down after a contested election. And DW correspondent Nick Connolly joins us now from Minsk. Uh, Nick, tell us, witnesses say that Maria Kolesnikova was bundled into a van. What do people in Minsk think has happened? not using official police in uniforms with um, some kind of identification to do these kind of things. We saw it happen yesterday at the protest where people were being arrested by police in plain clothes, carrying batons, some with flak jackets, but without any kind of ID on them. Um, in terms of Maria Kolesnikova, yes, she was out in the city walking, apparently going to a post office to get some documentation for a legal case that she has running against her when she suddenly disappeared. An eyewitness saw a van, an unmarked van without any number plates, which just said, uh, telecoms on it and men without a uh, uniform bundling her into that bus. No one has been able to reach her for the last few hours. This does seem like a significant development. She was the last of the three women who were campaigning against Alexander Lukashenko in that very, um, very prominent and very successful campaign this summer. The other two have left the country. She had refused to do so and now it seems like the authorities have decided to take her out of this protest movement. Okay, so Nick, sorry, apologies. Uh, due to some technical dif difficulties, we missed your first sentence of that first answer. So you can perhaps just fill us in on, um, on what people think about what happened. But, but also tell us about the, the role that Kolesnikova has been playing in the protests so far. Well, there seems to be little doubt on the part, at least, of the opposition supporters here in Minsk that she has been detained by the government, albeit by people in plain clothes, by security agents not wearing official police ID or uniforms. Um, the police, ha or the Interior Ministry, rather, has denied any involvement in this arrest. That's not convincing many people here. Maria Kolesnikova was or is someone who is one of the prominent faces of these protests, someone who is part of the trio of women campaigning against Alexander Lukashenko, along with Svetlana Tikhanovska and Veronika Tsepko. Carla, both of those now abroad. She had refused to leave the country and is now facing the consequences of that. She has also recently been involved in setting up a party. I think that's a bit early now. For now, this, this protest against Alexander Lukashenko's regime is taking place on the streets and not through traditional politics. But she is certainly one of the faces of these protests and her arrest will be a significant blow to the opposition. So what happens now for the opposition movement, Nick? Because, I mean, Sunday saw more huge protests. Now we have this reported um, abduction. Um, yet President Lukashenko is holding firm. Well, he's definitely refusing any kind of dialogue. He seems to think that any kind of negotiations would be a sign of weakness. He has referred to protesters as rats. His government has defamed them as prostitutes and drug addicts. So really hard line here and no seeming willingness to kind of engage with these people. Um, on the other hand, though, Kalisic has arrest, though symbolically a blow, I don't think in practical terms will be too much of a problem for these protesters because lots of this is happening on a kind of horizontal uh, level, people organizing themselves without any kind of orders from above. You see it in universities, you see it even in kind of residential compounds where people are reaching out to their neighbors and organizing um, uh, some kind of sit-ins or hanging up flags, other kind of symbolic challenges to the regime. So this is definitely a sign that the government is making good on its promise to clamp down, but I don't think it will stop people coming out in ever bigger numbers as we've seen in recent weeks. Nick Connolly on this developing story for us in Minsk. Nick, thanks for your reporting.